Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Chris, the Mike Guy, and today we are here based off of a comment that I got on a previous Q2U video asking me to compare it to an Audio-Technica AT2020. So I'd like to give a big shout out to Zerviscus, apologize if I'm not saying that right, for dropping that comment here today. And I wanted to take the opportunity again, just to follow up with you and make sure that I'm actually providing content that you guys are looking for. Again, for those of you that are looking for additional reviews or anything that you guys know that I have accessible to me, please be sure to reach out, drop comments in the videos, likes, all that kind of stuff. Let me know what you guys wanna see and I'll try to make the best possible videos for you guys so you get the information that you're looking for. Now again, today's video is gonna be pretty quick. We're just gonna do some quick side-by-side -side tests here between the Audio-Technica and the Samsung Q2U. Uh, for reference, the Q2U is being used in XLR format. I did that with the purpose of setting up the audio chain to make sure it was identical for both microphones. I could have used the Q2U in USB and uh, XLR for the Audio-Technica or something like that. But, you know, to make sure that you guys are getting the same audio chain so it doesn't sound like I'm trying to overemphasize one microphone compared to the other. If you guys check out the level meters down at the bottom of the screen here on my left camera right and the right channel will be the Audio-Technica and on my right camera left, the left channel on the video will be the Samsung Q2U. Just gives you guys an opportunity to see if we're running into any clipping issues, popping issues, any kind of stuff like that. So you guys can really get an understanding for what these microphones are doing, if they're being over amplified. And it's also to show you that I have them kind of at comparable levels. So that way I'm not trying to, again, overemphasize either one. Most of you that have seen any videos that I've talked about in the past when we've talked about these USB microphones, I love live monitoring for any audio setup. I love being able to hear what I sound like, but you guys notice I'm not wearing any headphones, anything like that while I do these recordings. Again, just trying to be as unbiased as possible. I can't hear myself until I do the final recordings. And again, in final recording, no filters, no compression, no suppression, no anything is done to this audio track. Whatever I'm putting in is what you guys are going to get out and listen to. So that's exactly why I want those headphones worn. And I want you guys to be able to hear exactly what the bass audio for these things is going to sound like. So you know what you get to work with. Now, for those of you that might be a little unfamiliar with microphones, you'll notice that the Q2U, I am talking straight into, and the Audio-Technica AT2020, I'm talking into the side of it. So, again, this is a standard condenser style, the Q2U being your standard dynamic style microphone. So, there is a bit of a difference in the design of these microphones here, how they're set up. Typically... And this is typically, I don't always want to say that's a fact, but typically for a lower price point, you can get better audio quality out of a condenser microphone versus a dynamic. A lot of times with these dynamic microphones, it takes a lot of components. It, it takes some cost to make these things sound super crisp, super clean. So usually in a dollar for dollar perspective, you end up with a better microphone out of your condenser, but at a cost. The condenser microphones are much more problematic in noisy environments. They pick up a whole lot more background noise. They pick up reverb a lot more. They are much more susceptible to ambient noise intrusion, as I like to call it. I don't know what the technical term for it is, but ambient noise intrusion versus your dynamics, which are activated by the audio versus being constantly electronically activated like the condensers are. Now, some USB microphones are able to overcome this inherent additional noise through uh, audio chain that's built into the USB circuit where it applies automatic gates based on really, really low levels like minus 70 dB and stuff like that. It automatically cuts it off. But in an XLR format, again, why I'm using this format, you typically, whatever you get is what you get. This thing will pick up audio as low as, I think my refrigerator back behind me runs at about minus 85 dB or something like that. And it'll pick up that noise. It'll hear it. It'll understand that that is being activated. And you have to, you know, inherently know that that's going to be added to your audio chain when you're doing your recordings. Now, both of these microphones are cardioid polar patterned. Now, cardioid is typically, I like to, I like to reference it as a, a heart shape or a spade style pattern where most of your audio is directly picked up from in front of the microphone and it should taper off or add coloration 
as you go around or come behind the microphone. So we're gonna do a quick polar pattern test here. I'm gonna rotate around both of the microphones, see how it changes, see how the audio sounds a little bit different. It's gonna look a little weird because I'm actually gonna move in front of the QTU when I'm talking to the AT2020, but it should work. We shouldn't have any issues with that, at least there. So let's start with the AT2020. As you can see, I'm standing directly in front of the microphone now. I'm gonna rotate to my left, and I know I mentioned crossing patterns, but I don't think I'm gonna end up doing that. I'm just gonna kind of go to one side. There's no point in doing both of them. I'm now at a first 90 degree angle. You should start to see that coloration. My voice should have tapered off a little bit. It sounds, uh, it almost, uh, I, I, again, I'm not listening, but I would almost like to think that it starts to sound robotic. I'm gonna go almost all the way behind it. Now I'm on the back side of the capsule, basically. You're gonna see how much rejection is here, how much is changing um, and kind of rotating back to the front now. You should have seen quite a bit of difference as I rotate it around. My voice gets a little quieter. It starts to sound almost compressed robotic or something like that because that's the way the capsule is just picking up the sound as it's coming across sideways instead of directly in the front. So now same test with the Q2U. Let's get this done. Now the one thing about the Q2U, I will say, being dynamic, they're a little bit better at rejecting noise that comes from the side. So I'm about at a 45 degree now. We're gonna keep rotating around. Now standing at about a 90 degree angle here. We're talking directly into the side of it. Should be pretty standard. Now for this, I'm gonna have to kind of squat down to get behind it because of the omnidirectional pattern. But now I'm about to behind the microphone, about the same distance I was from the AT2020. Um, not quite exactly behind it, but just trying to squat down like this is not very comfortable. Just to give you guys an idea of what that shape is or what that um, pattern is to the audio of the microphone. Now we'll do a quick plosive test. I will give the QTU automatic credit on this out the gate because it does have a built-in pop filter within the metal grill. It's on the inside of the microphone here, whereas the AT2020 really doesn't. So as I'm doing this pop filter test, um, you guys will notice probably a lot of boom to the AT2020. It's probably going to clip pretty bad. So be careful for those of you that are wearing headphones um, and just be ready for that. I'm going to do it without a pop filter and then I'll add a pop filter to it in a second. By the way, guys, if you don't have a decent pop filter, it can make a world of difference in your audio recordings. I love these mesh metal pop filters. This is one that came with a Rode. Uh, my NT1 kit that I got, I absolutely love this thing. Look into getting a decent pop filter. It can really, really change the way your recordings work out. Now on to this. Uh, we're we're going to start with the AT2020 here today. I'll do one recording without, one recording with, and then a final without again, so you guys can hear exactly how these pops work with these microphones. Peter picked lots of peppers from Paul's Patch. Peter picked lots of peppers from Paul's Patch. And Peter picked lots of peppers from Paul's Patch. And now on to our Q2U. Peter picked lots of peppers from Paul's Patch. Peter picked lots of peppers from Paul's Patch. And Peter picked lots of peppers from Paul's Patch. That was just going to be our simple, you know, real easy plosive test there just to show you guys exactly what those sound like, how those impact, how they affect the audio recordings. Like if you're trying to get up close and personal with your microphone and you're really trying to get, you know, the best parts of your voice, then that can have a huge difference. Having that pop filter there can be absolutely amazing, especially for microphones like the AT2020. Now for our video here today, we have done our polar pattern test. We have done our plosive test. We've done a a lot of side-by-side -side comparison for this entire video here. I hope this allowed you guys to get some good understanding of the differences of the audio qualities between the two microphones. Um, again, I make no judgments here. I want to make this as simple as possible for you guys just to hear the differences without me telling you which one's better and having a pre- um, a predisposed understanding of which one you expect to be better. If you guys liked it, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button today. If you guys really like the content that's coming out of this channel, hit that subscribe button, smash that bell, as they say, um, to, be, to get notifications for new videos that are coming out in the future. Trying to publish one weekly, as long as we've got microphones here to review, we're gonna keep getting you guys new content. So hope you guys enjoy the video here today. Thank you all for watching. My name is Chris, the mic guy. We'll check you next time.